today on Speak the Word Ministries, Word TV. Man, do you realize that because my life was totally based on fear, that's why I didn't go out and pursue ministry? And the thing that I was afraid of is the thing that the devil will use against you even after you've done it. And do you realize that the minute that I said, I'm not going to be afraid anymore, I'm going to do it. And sometimes you got to just do it afraid. You got to do it afraid I did it. And sometimes you got to get the pain, you got to get the sting of the fear over and just do it. And just do it. And I just went out and said, you know what, I'm going to do it. Man, I'm going to start this thing. Mature Christians learn to avoid things that are unholy because we understand the importance of having an intimate relationship with a holy God. The blessings of God are manifested as we live according to His Word and the beauty of holiness and stay connected to the plan of God for our lives. Let's join Pastor Dexter Skeppel in part two of today's message that's already in progress as he ministers on allowing fear to become your ministry. If you are afraid to fly, it's because that word is not settling in on the inside of you or you're afraid to launch out. It's because, listen to me, it's because of lack of word, little word or no word at all. Listen to me, once fear comes in, the only thing that can drive fear out is the word. Fear will stay there and just hang out there to somebody tell it to leave. Fear will come in, dominate that area of your life, and listen to me, take a hold of that area of your life and never let it go until somebody stands up with authority and command it to leave. But outside of that, fear will just stay there and just hang out there to somebody tell it to leave. Now listen to this, child of God, because in the area of your life, if there is a dominating area of fear, you and I have the authority to drive it out. Turn your Bible to Luke chapter, Luke chapter 5. Glory to God. Glory to God. At some point and at some place, you're going to have to drive the fear out. You're going to have to stand up and fight the spirit of fear. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid. No, no. God has not given you the spirit of fear. So you've got to rise up in faith and drive out the spirit of fear. Fear dominates. It controls. It takes a hold of. Completely controls somebody's life. Do you know the reason why? Most of us are in a financial crunch. Those of you who are in a financial crunch, it's because of the fear-based life that you and I have been taught to live. You and I was pumped fear in from the time we were young. Don't go outside. A car's going to run you over. Don't do this. That's going to happen. Don't go over there. This going See, a fear-based life. See, some of us are so afraid for our kids, we don't even want them to go out the house. Because we're afraid of something is going to happen to them. Man, let me tell you something, man. I thank God that my mother wasn't like that. I mean, she was just, she was just, go, 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 just go. Go and come back, go. Just go. At four years old, I used to walk home from school. I remember. Head start. I used to walk home from school. I used to walk home. My mom said, just you know the way to go? And I see you four. Four. He said, how do you remember? I remember. Four. Walk home. i never forget it. Campo Rico Shanti. Walk right on home. Never forget it. I used to march myself right on home. 
Why? See, because you can teach a child fear. And when they come 18, they don't want to leave. They want to stay in your house. No one want to go down to the ballpark down around the corner. Why? Because it's fear-based. Everything is fear-based completely. I told my mom, I said, Mom, I want to go to St. Thomas. She said, boy. I said, Mom, I want to go to St. Thomas. She said, leave me. I said, I want to go to St. Thomas. She said, well, if you want to go to St. Thomas, take yourself down to the airport and go on a plane and go to St. Thomas. I was 14 years old. I said, I want to go to St. Thomas. She said, well, go ahead and go to St. Thomas. So I walk up to the seaboard. That's those days you walk up to the seaboard. I had them $20, and they put me on a plane, and I went to St. Thomas. Now, when I got to St. Thomas, I had no place to go. It's a true story. It's a true story. Went right on that seaboat. Went around there, and I looked, oh, my goodness. And I walked, and I said, you know what? This is much too far for me. I got back on the boat, and I head back home. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, a fear-based life, when you're full of fear, when you teach your children fear, you say, well, no, Pastor, I can't do that. See, I'm not trying to tell you to tell your child, but I'm saying at some point, come on, somebody, help me. Especially with a young man, if you keep him in that house all cooped up, he'll become a sissy. Afraid of everything, amen. Can't do nothing. A big sissy you got. You done grown up a big wuss. A big wuss. That's what you got. Afraid to do everything. Nothing. Can't go nowhere. Can't even go up the road. I mean, when I worked at Pueblo Supermarket, my mom had a car. And when I was through at work at night, you know what she said? Catch the bus. Yeah, you catch the bus. That's your job. You go out there, you catch the bus, and you go home. I said, but how about when I get out to the road? She said, you walk home. You walk home. Ain't nobody going to do you nothing. You walk home, and when you come home, tell me you're home. That's it. <laughs> Did she have a car? Yes, she had a car. Did my dad have a car? Yes, he had a car. But if I was going to live a life that was going to be fearless, catch the bus. I'd be out there, man, at night waiting for the bus, and no bus would be coming. And, and, and I'll never forget it. This, this taxi driver, he always looked for me, and he said, he said, he said, I'm going to wait for you. See, see, the thing is, the thing is, if you live a fear-based life, if you live a fear-based life, you can't do nothing. You cannot do nothing. Man, when I was 18, I told my mom, I'm gone. I'm out of here. Bye. I see ya. I love ya. I'm gone. She said, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to take a trip to Antigua. My first time when I turned 18, I mean, we graduated June the 13th, 1986. And I'm telling you, that was on a Friday and I was gone. I sure was. I was gone. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Antigua. I'm going to spend three weeks. I'm going to have a good time. Yes, sir. When I got there in Antigua, first time, didn't know no place. I jumped in the bus. The man said, where are you going? I said, wherever you're going, I go with you. It's the truth. It is the truth. I swear to God. God so help me. And let me tell you something. The man drove all around Antigua. He said, where do I drop you off? I said, I don't know. Wherever you're going, I'm going. It's the truth. I swear to God. I tell you the truth. See, some of y'all are totally afraid of everything. I couldn't stay lost forever. He said, but where is your family? I said, well, my sister lived here on in Matthews Road at All Saints. And she said, okay, I know where she lives. And he dropped me there. I said, good. I showed up. My sister said, what are you doing there? I said, I came to visit. <laughs> sure enough thing. See, some of y'all, life is too controlled by fear. Totally controlled by fear. Totally dominated by fear. I mean, I just, I said, she said, where are you going? She said, do you know the place? I said, no, I'm just, I said, how can you get lost on an island? I said, at some point, somebody's going to point you in the direction that you need to go. At some point, someplace, somewhere, somehow. I mean, if you, if your life is totally controlled by fear, 
then you're not going to allow yourself to even go out beyond some place. I'm telling you, man, it was a couple months later. It was like two months later. I went to Texas. I went to Texas. Now, I had, I, had, I, had, I had people that met me at Texas or met me in Texas when we went to college, and they walked with their daddy. Young man, I said, man, what you doing with your daddy? You're supposed to come here by yourself. I got there, man. He was said, well, what you doing with your father? He said, well, I, he just came to show me around. Show you around? Play, he don't know the place. Are you all listening to me? Man, when I got there in Texas, man, I was like, wow. wow. You know how I found my way around Texas? Just keep driving. Yes, sir, keep driving. At some point, somewhere, somehow, I'm going to find my way back home. I've never seen a person that stayed lost forever. Lost in a town is just temporary. See, if you live your life totally based on fear, then you're never going to do anything. My wife and myself, we were in Puerto Rico, and I hardly know the place, but I told her, if we just keep driving at some point, we're going to find where we're going. Did I tell you that? Just keep driving. I said, just keep driving. I said, just drive. I said, look, that look like a good turn. Turn right here. She said, where are you going? I said, look, I told her I'm taking a shortcut. <laughs> Ask her the truth. I tell the truth. She said, I said, I'm taking a shortcut. And I'm going around the traffic. I'm just driving, man. I ain't got no place to go. And I said, you know what? We have discovered so much things just by me diverting around the traffic. Some of you will catch it when you go home. Just drive. If you want to find a place, just drive. I'm not going to be afraid and dominate. I mean, look, look, hey, how much longer can I stay lost? And guess what? Ask Terry, we just ended up the place we need to go. I said, oh, look at that. I know that place. Let's just stop right here. And at some point, see, at some point in your life, you're going to have to get out of that shell of fear. Afraid to do this, afraid to drive. Man, I go any place and drive. I go any place and drive. It don't matter where. I just flow with the flow of the traffic. They going in that direction? I'm going in that direction. Are you understanding this fear-based lifestyle? that some of us live because once you're fear-based everything becomes hard when I moved to Texas I just joined in with the Texans I sure did I just joined right on in I just float along I wasn't wearing no big hat no bell buckle that's too deep for me amen I wasn't going that far but I'm gonna flow right along with them how you understand what I'm saying See, the, the thing is that dominates a lot of our lives is because we're totally based in fear. A fear-based lifestyle. Turn the Bibles again, Luke chapter 5. And we're dealing with it here. Don't live in fear. Say it out of your mind. I will not live in fear. Say it again. Say it loud. I. Say it one more time. I will not live in fear. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass. As the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were going out of them, and they were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed that he would do what? Thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And, and when he was left speaking... He said unto Simon, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered, said unto him, this is where I want to stay for a while, Master, we have toiled all night and we have nothing. Master, we have toiled all night and we have nothing. How many of you know whatever God say to do, we have to do it because it is not what we see, but it's what he sees. Say that again. It is not what we see, but it's what God sees. 
And sometimes what we see is not what God has seen. And what God has seen outweighs what you and I have saw. What you and I just saw. So you and I have to cancel out what we just saw and just press ahead with what God had already seen. So what he had to do was to forget what he knew and just press on to what God said. This is what it says here. Powerful. And Simon said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. See, a fear-based life is always moved by what they see and what they hear and not what God says. Let me say that again. A fear-based life, a life that is full of fear, never moves out on what God says. They always move out on what somebody else said. Or what somebody else saw. I thank God for my mother every single day because she could have pulled back and said, No, no, you can't go to St. Thomas. Not supposed to, when you go over there, so not supposed to plane crash. Not supposed to da 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 da. Let me tell you something. If you have a fear based life, you'll never travel. If you have a fear based life, you'll never get a house. If you have a fear based life, you'll stay in the same place. A fear based life holds you in the same place. It holds you in the same position. And if you are stuck today, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to break the spirit of fear. Because once the spirit of fear is broken off of your life, you begin to see things in a whole complete different way. Listen to what it says here. It says, nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. Not the nets. He said, okay, I'm going to just partially obey you. And I'm just going to stay exactly where I'm at. Because fear allows you to be stuck in the same place and the same position all the days of your life. Fear allows you never to take a chance in doing nothing. How can you expand and go further if you're operating in fear? How can you open that business if you totally operate in fear? Because the fear of failure and if you're afraid to succeed then you are going to stay in the same exact place. How many know you can get bad information from people and ride that information all the way to your deathbed because it's just wrong information? You can stay in the same place in that wrong information all the days of your life. And you and I have to know how to, listen to me, hear the voice of God first before we hear the voice of man. Is somebody listening to me this morning? A fear-based life. Listen to this. He said this. In verse number 6. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. And their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were on the other side, that they should come and help. And they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink. One time obeying God. Woo. Woo. Oh, somebody didn't catch that this morning. Oh, my good Lord. Now, let me give you my little personal testimony over and over and over again. I know you heard it, but here, I don't have another one. So I got to give you the same one. Man, do you realize that because my life was totally based on fear, that's why I didn't go out and pursue ministry? And the thing that I was afraid of is the thing that the devil will use against you even after you've done it. And do you realize that the minute that I said, I'm not going to be afraid anymore, I'm going to do it. And sometimes you got to just do it afraid. You just got to do it afraid I did it. And sometimes you got to get the pain, you got to get the sting of the fear over and just do it. And just do it. And I just went out and said, you know what, I'm going to do it. Man, I'm going to start this ministry. So the first thing I had to realize, I was in Detroit. First thing I had to get is, how am I going to get out of this apartment? Who could the devil say, well, you can't leave because you got to wait till your lease is over. How many of you know the devil will tell you all kind of things? Man, he started talking to me. He said, man, you can't do this. You're going to have to wait till your lease is over before you get out there, man. So I walked out to the lady, man. I said, ma'am, um, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to leave and I'm going to have to break the lease. She said, you can't break the lease. And the way she said it was like she was going to arrest me. 
and take me to jail if I did not stay in Detroit. Never forget, I was at 1500 Providence Drive. She got to say, no, you can't leave. And just as she said it, it was like fear just gripped my heart. And man, my faith arose on the inside of me. And I said, I had a little bit of that Campo Rico came up. Said, mm. The way she said it, I said, oh, no, you can't talk to me like that. I mean, something rose up on the inside of me. And guess what I said? I said, man, why I can't leave? She said, because it will go on your credit. I said, go ahead and join the club. <laughs> Put it on my, is that it? Is that the only penalty? He said, you can't leave because of the going. I said, what? I said, well, I said, well, I'm gone. And let me tell you something, man. I got on that plane. I called Terry and told Terry, come back home and I'm going to start a church. Let me tell you, sometimes you got to do it afraid. You got to do it afraid. And this has been almost eight years later. The thing that the devil will cripple you the most about doing, when you do it, it'll yield so much success to you. Uh, uh. And I'm telling you, that was my fear. And the thing is, the devil will hold you back with the area that you afraid of, and he'll keep you there, and he'll bind you up. Let me tell you something. The minute that you break out of that fear, there's prosperity, there's peace, there is the anointing of God. You just got to get through the fear. And sometimes you got to just walk through it. Sometimes you got to just get up and just walk yourself through that thing and say, I'm going. And say, I'm going. And let me tell you something. Every possible excuse came up. So my wife asked me, she said, honey, what you going to do about the furniture? Because wives are very caring and loving. And Terry was in St. Croix at the time, and we had an apartment in Detroit. So she asked me, what are we going to do with the furniture in the house? Because she had came all the way from St. Croix, and she had put this nice, beautiful table up. And she was very concerned about the table. Somebody help me here. How many know the devil can use anybody? I'm there, I'm thinking in my mind, the table? I know what I'm going to do with the table. I'm going to leave the table right here in Detroit. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it right there. I ain't going to take the table no place. That's what I'm going to do. What about the bed? I'm going to do the same thing with the bed. I'm going to leave the bed right here in the apartment. You tell a person that's coming in, they got a bed, and they got a table, and they got a television. How many of you know that you can hang up your life on small things? Somebody catching something, man. Well, the ultimate question was, what are we going to do with the car? How many of you know, car, I parked the car at the airport, like where I should have. I got out the car, and I went on the plane, and I left the car right there. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I left it right there in the parking lot. Because when God say, launch out, I ain't got no time to worry about no car. You kidding me? Car and this and man, car. Man, car. how many of you know? You said, Pastor Skeppel, let me tell you something. Eventually, yes, I did. Went back for the car. Yes, yes, yes. Several months later, I went back for the car. How many of you know the car bill? Every time it starts every day, I go like, it's going to stay right there. And it was four months later when I went back for the car. Four months. So how many of you know? <laughs> Think about how much airports charge a day for the car. It was almost getting for the worth of the car. How many of God is a good God? I got see, see because if you got a fair based life and you start you start calculating, start thinking too much, your life is gonna be right there at the exact same place. I'm closing with this. 
I got back there. I got in there. I took me about a good hour to find my car. I could not find my car. I was up and down in that parking lot looking, is that my car? I mean, a man says, sir, are you trying to find my car? I get up there. I open my car. Started my car up. Hey, you know, it started. I was very happy that my car started. Praise God. I got out there, man. I start to look for the ticket. And I cannot find the ticket. I can't find the ticket. Because, you know, the ticket determines how long the car was there. I got to the gate. I tell the man, I say, sir, I cannot find the ticket. He said, this is what he said. And the God is my honor. Over the years, the power of prayer has grown tremendously among mature Christians, young believers, and even children in their primary years. For some of us, when we pray, we sometimes feel that our prayers are left unanswered. Well, let us stand in intercession for you. Our prayer counselors are ready to stand on God's word with you and to help you in any prayer facet of your life that you may need us to stand in agreement with. You can call us at 340-778-7729 or toll free 866-778-1575. Our phone lines are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and our prayer counselors are eagerly waiting to assist you. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. If you would like to receive this message in its entirety, you can write to us at P.O. Box 8304, Sunny Isles, St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, 00823, or email us at speaktheword at islands.vi, or you can call us at 340-778-1575, or toll free at 866-778-1575. We truly believe that as a result of this message, you will be blessed exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you may even ask or think. We are located at number 7 Peter's Rest in the Wiesner Development Complex on St. Croix, and our Sunday services begin at 7 o'clock a.m. and 9 o'clock a.m. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast, and we hope you join us next time on Word TV. together, you don't have to do nothing but stand by.